Good day, Deep and Word family. Welcome to day 31 of our Bible study review. Today is day one of a brand new book. It's the book of Leviticus. Now, there are a lot of people who dread reading this book, but once you have revelation about these sacrifices and how they all point to Christ, then it's much easier to comprehend and you no longer avoid the book. You actually have fun reading it. Y'all know that's my mission, right? I want to make the Bible fun to read and easier to comprehend. I love breaking things down in layman's terms so that a child could understand what's going on. So I'm going to do just that. Today's Bible study review, it is Leviticus chapters 1 through 3. Now throughout these chapters, there are three sacrifices that are covered. The burnt offering, the grain offering, and the peace offering. So let's get in to chapter 1. Let's start at verse 1, and I'm going to stop at verse 4. And Yahuwah called to Moshe and spoke to him from the tent of appointment, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to Yahuwah, you bring your offering of the livestock, of the herd, or of the flock. If his offering is a burnt offering of the herd, let him bring a male, a perfect one. And I just want to pause again. The burnt offering points to Christ. Christ is our burnt offering. If you have not seen the video before that I recommended from Jonathan Kahn, I'm going to pin it in the description again so that you may watch it, so that you understand and connect these things. Let's continue reading in the middle of verse 3. Let him bring it at the door of the tent of appointment for his acceptance before Yahuwah, and he shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. The idea here is the person who is guilty of sin brings the animal, which is innocent. Now, the guilty party lays their hand upon the innocent party. And when the blood is shed from the innocent one, his innocence is transferred over to the guilty party. Is this making sense? Because Messiah's innocence is transferred onto us. He pays the sin debt. And y'all, that's what atonement means. It means to cover. All right. Love covers a multitude of sins. Essentially, this is just a partial payment, but it's showing the picture of what we lost in the garden. We lost the full glory, the connection with Abba, right? And that's through our forefather, Adam. Well, this system, this priesthood is a picture of a partial payment of what we would eventually get a full payment from the Messiah. The second Adam would come to recover us in the glory. So yes, the guilty party had to bring the innocent party. He himself was responsible for slaughtering. Now the priesthood would catch the blood and then start to sprinkle the blood and the specific places that the father says to sprinkle the blood. Now the blood represents life and pureness has to cover what is guilty in order to be acceptable before the father. So our heavenly father wanted to make sure that everyone could bring an offering. So you could bring a bull, you could bring a sheep or a goat, or you can bring a dove or a pigeon, okay? And this represents maybe, you know, the rich of the rich and then maybe the poor. It says that this burnt offering is a sweet aroma unto Yahuwah Elohim. Chapter 2 talks about the grain offering. Not every offering is an animal sacrifice with blood. The grain offering represents the body of Christ. All of these grain offerings are to be of fine flour, or if they're going to be baked cakes, they have to be unleavened. I want you to see that through every variation, because not everybody can cook. He knows. He's like, hey, so if you can't cook, to save your life, just bring some fine flour and pour some oil over it. He's considering everyone. This is why we eat unleavened bread when we drink of the cup as well. The unleavened represents a life without sin. Our Messiah lived a sinless life. Notice how the bread, the unleavened bread or the fine flour, all of it had to have oil poured over it. Our Messiah was actually anointed before his death, burial and resurrection. Do you remember? Have you read through the gospel accounts that the woman with the alabaster of oil she broke it open and she poured it over the messiah's head and everyone around her was so mad they were like why is she wasting this oil it could have been sold to feed the poor and messiah told them to hush because she was doing something so holy she was anointing him for his burial all right let's get back to the text let's read verse 11 no grain offering which you bring to Yahuwah is made with leaven, for you do not burn any leaven or any honey in the offering to Yahuwah made by fire. Again, 
Leaven represents sin. He says, you shall not. You shall not bring leaven bread. You shall not bring sin as an offering up to me. Don't try me. Don't come to me talking about, I've got the blood of Messiah. Now I can go back to living a life of leaven. Don't play with Abba like that. Because I'm telling you, if you play with fire, you might get burned. Verse 12, bring them to Yahuwah as an offering of first fruits, but they are not to be burned on the altar for a sweet fragrance. Our Messiah is the first fruit of the resurrection. All right, we are called the latter first fruits. Everything in the Bible talks about seed form, seed in harvest time. Our bodies, you know, if they die, they go into the ground. They go into the ground as a seed form, right? Just like an apple seed. But what comes up is not the seed. What comes up is a more glorious form. Our bodies will be changed just like Messiah's when the trumpet calls. We too will have a glorious body. We are called the latter first fruits. But he is the first fruit of the resurrection. This will all start to click and make sense once we get to Leviticus chapter 23. So hold on, okay? Verse 13. And season with salt every offering of your grain offering. And do not allow the salt of the covenant of your Elohim to be lacking from your grain offering. With all of your offerings, you bring salt. There are so many things that you can dive deep and discover about salt. So let me talk about a few things. Salt represents purity. Its chemical compound cannot be broken down. So its nature has an inherent purity. What does this represent for us? Everything that we do before the Father, we should do it from a pure heart. Not with selfish motives, not with motives to gain anything, but our motive should always be pure of salt. Salt preserves. We know that salt preserves meat. Flesh by itself starts decaying and spoiling over time. But if you put salt into the mix, it cures the meat and it preserves it. Now, not that anything that we offer of our flesh could be presentable before the Father. We have the Lamb of God who lived a sinless life and he was presented as the pure salt. But now we have put on his nature and he calls us the salt of the earth. And what are we preserving? The kingdom, the priesthood. His word, come on y'all. And thirdly, salt was precious. It was expensive back in the day. In ancient days, salt was a great gift. It was a great present, a very costly commodity. So when you put salt with your offering to God, it's like saying, I'm giving you my absolute best. I recommend that you read through the rest of the chapter and you start to write down these oils and what they mean. Frankincense and myrrh, these are heavenly smells, y'all. And these have everything to do with our Messiah of being a king, of being royalty, and for proper burial oils. Please research these things. And chapter three is about the peace offering. Now the peace offering could be a male or a female, and it could be either a lamb or a goat. Now the process of the peace offering is very similar to that of the burnt offering. Just take notice that yes, the guilty party has to put their hands upon the innocent party so that there is a transfer going on. And I want you to see all of the work that the priests have to do. It's a bloody mess. And the priests have to take care of this day in and day out to cover their brethren. The Levitical priesthood is a picture of the priesthood that will be in the millennial kingdom. Y'all, we are being prepared for this right now. So of course, we're not doing animal sacrifices, but we're still called to make sacrifices to cover our brethren, to cover our loved ones. This is why he wants you to stir up the gifts on the inside of you. And the only way that you would recognize your purpose is by serving one another. Our Messiah said the greatest in the kingdom is the greatest servant. Doing the will of the Father by covering and loving one another. So let's close out the chapter and I'm going to read verse 17. An everlasting law throughout your generations in all of your dwellings. You do not eat any fat or any blood. Drinking blood, eating blood, or the fat is what the Father says you shall not do. This is why the demonic and the satanic, that's what they do because they rebel against the commands of the king. They drink blood and they do these dirty rituals. When you see someone partaking of that, you need to leave the vicinity immediately. 
or if you see a mocking or a representation of something like this on the television, my advice to you is to shut it off. Shut it off. You do not want to be initiated in one of their rituals because it's not of Abba. Deep Inward family, that is all that I have for you today. Until tomorrow, Yah bless.